I know what you're thinking. It's 2024. Nobody reads newspapers these days. And the truth is, I don't either. I read the funnies. Growing up, I remember reading them all at my aunt's house. BC, Blondie, Peanuts, you name it. But there was one franchise in particular that caught my attention. A series that no other franchise has ever came close to competing in terms of popularity. I'm talking about this one right here. I'm talking about freaking Garfield. We all know him. He's the lovable fat orange cat that eats, sleeps, hates Mondays, and playfully harasses his friends. Sounds like a freaking mood, to be honest. I used to watch all the classic 80s cartoons, whether it was Garfield and Friends or the holiday specials, collected a buttload of volume comics from Barnes & Noble. Heck, this was even the reason how I was introduced to lasagna. In the first place... Well, for the first time in nearly two decades, we got a new movie. The Garfield movie, and this one stars Chris Pratt of all people, who stars as the iconic beeline. And this is where he actually encounters his long lost father who takes him on a high staking adventure. This is the third theatrical release for this franchise, and it's actually the first time in history where this film is fully animated, which I actually think is a much better choice. Considering that the last two were live action starring Bill Murray, but they just weren't received that well. You would think for a character that's been around since 1978, and also considering the fact that we live in the day and age where comic book adaptations are so common these days, that there will be more adaptations for this cat. But then again, I don't know, maybe just the last two films were just a big fail and they just scared all the studios away. I don't know, I'm not the one in charge. If you guys follow me on Instagram, then y'all already know that I was able to watch this film on an early Sunday fan screening, all prepped up in t-shirt and merch. Cinemark, I actually gotta admit, you guys really outdid yourself on this Garfield popcorn bucket. It's so cute, but at the same time, it's actually one of my more favorite personal designs, so. As a Garfield fan, I'm actually glad I bought this. AMC Theaters, I do thank you for the free squishy at the fan screen, but you just had one job, though. You just gotta get the stripes next time. So it's been a few days already, and what do I think about this film? Um, it is technically a much better improvement compared to the last two films, and I would even go as far as to say it is the best Garfield film we've gotten in theaters, but that's really not saying that much. Because even from a critical standpoint, it's... it's fine. It's really... it's just fine. There's nothing here that reinvents the genre or is a big Oscar contender for best animated feature, but what it really does is just, it's just a simple film that really respects the lore. So like I said earlier about Garfield's personality being fat, lazy, and hungry, those elements are there in the film and even hardcore fans like myself can acknowledge the bright side about that. But the biggest complaint that I would say in this entire movie has to be Chris Pratt as Garfield. Don't need expansion. No, please, no. Ow, it's so hot. Ow, it's really hurting. Ow, ow, ow. Like, his interpretation is okay, but then again, this is probably the worst Garfield voice I've ever heard in my life. And even as much as I love and respect Chris Pratt, he was severely miscasted. I apologize in advance. The eating you're about Take to see that. will not be- Ha <laughs> ha! I mean, I'll even go as far as to say that the Bill Murray interpretation was actually much better. It's not his acting that's bad, it's just his tone and the way how he presents himself as the character. Because when I think of the voice of Garfield, I think of someone like he's very- slow monotone and very unenthusiastic but i i can't do garfield but you know what i mean and also that he has a bit of a sassiness to him but chris pratt does apply some of those elements but it's not really much of a main factor and chris when he does his voice if like say for example if i were to close my eyes and i try to imagine what garfield's voice sounds like while watching this movie and if i hear garfield talk i'm not gonna hear garfield i'm gonna hear freaking chris pratt <laughs> Did you really think you could defeat me, wretched fool? I really don't know what is with Hollywood wanting to hire Chris Pratt for almost every animated movie in a nutshell. But I mean, we could use other different actors to play him. We don't always have to depend on him. I think it really just has to mostly originate the fact that Chris was in two popular animated films considering that it was the Lego movie and the Super Mario Bros movie. Yes, while that is true, and Chris Pratt was the main star, but we have to be honest, Chris Pratt was not the reason those films were successful. And I don't think that's what the Hollywood executives were thinking, but then again, when does Hollywood really know what we want sometimes? Okay, so why was the Lego movie successful? I mean, first off, you actually had good characters, good writing, good direction, good storytelling, good overall stuff. And then for the Mario Bros. movie, well, it was just an anticipated nostalgia wet dream. Chris Pratt, great guy, never met him, seems cool. I would like to hang out with him one day, but he actually just shouldn't have been Garfield. They should have just casted somebody else as a whole. Except no one's going to be able to outdo Lorenzo Music's version. Best Garfield ever.
Odie is the cute yellow beagle dog that was always Garfield's companion and being there by his side and is the only animal in there that only talks by barking, which I was nervous for initially because I don't know why, but for some apparent reason, I actually had just this weird thought thinking that Hollywood was going to mess this up by making Odie actually verbally talk like a human. I guess I was just getting a lot of 1992 Tom and Jerry vibes, but thank God that did not happen. And for John being Garfield's owner, but also the bumbling doofus that he he is he is just there and he is played by Nicholas Holt which you probably didn't actually believe that's actually Nicholas Holt's voice unless you googled it yourself again I don't blame you but actually that actor's got range I mean this is probably the easiest paycheck for Nicholas Holt because John pretty much doesn't do anything in this film I mean when you look within the first act it really does set up how John and Garfield met when he was a little kid and that's actually shown within the trailer but that's pretty much it when you get to the second and third act John John is pretty much a background character doing, well, basically being John, if that makes sense for all you Garfield fans. I will be a little bit more forgiving on that just because John has been sometimes a background character where it's been in the comics or in the animated shows. So I'm not really going to complain too much about that. But I'm just saying it just would have been nice of a change. The rest of the side characters and antagonists, they're just pretty much there to progress the story with very little development and attachment that we have to. Although I will admit, Garfield's father Vic was a nice additional character to this franchise. We really haven't gotten that much close to Garfield's parents except that one special episode in the 80s where it was Garfield on the town and he just happens to encounter his mom and I think this might be the first time they've ever done anything that involves Garfield's dad so this is a nice add-on to it and also the fact that it's played by Samuel Jackson of all people I mean it is one thing to have Samuel Jackson to play your character but what surprised me the most is that Sam Jackson doesn't sound like Sam Jackson he actually sounds like he's putting effort to change his voice because we always know Samuel Jackson and he has that distinct voice that everyone just can recognize and oh yeah you know that's Sam Jackson but he actually does a little bit different there were times I was like you don't really sound like yourself which I give an A for effort in that case as far as animation standards it's nothing to brag about it's just basically an upgraded version of the Garfield show just a little bit much more money involved into it Story-wise, I really don't have a lot of complaints when it comes to the first act. The first act is pretty much just fine. I can deal with it. It's when they start leaving their direction in the second act towards more of the side characters. I know you're trying to do that just because you're trying to get more development, but it almost looks like the way how they executed it was like they're taking their direction away from our main protagonist, even though it's called the Garfield movie. It's not the side character movie. We didn't come to see these characters. But then it's part when we shift back to the third act, and then it starts to focus mainly on Garfield again and his journey, and then that's where it starts being the saving grace. And I was like, you know, that was a little bit of a satisfying conclusion. I'm actually fine with that. The last two complaints I can really say about this film is really just that the film tends to overuse a lot on cliche jokes that we've heard for the millionth time already and really does overuse a lot of pop cultural reference. It's almost like they're trying to do this on purpose to make their film relevant to the audiences. Hey producers, if you actually want to make your films very relevant, kind of like Barbie, Oppenheimer, Dune, and the Spider-Verse, here's a little secret on that. Make good stories. This ain't rocket science. Overall, when it came to my fan screening, no one was really having a bad time. Actually, what I saw, I really saw a lot of people in there with smiles on their faces, having a good time, and just having fun. And that's what this movie is, more or less. This is just a safe fun film that family and children can really just go out and just watch this movie and just waste their time for the next hour and 30 minutes or something like that. But it's really nothing to think about the next day. For my rating, the Garfield movie is generic. A couple years down the line, I can really see this movie being played out on Nickelodeon Cartoon Network where they have their little movie premiere and it's just nice, it's just safe. If they actually do make a sequel, I'm all for it. Hopefully they can bring in some other characters like Normal, Arlene, or maybe Binky the Clown and use them and maybe they'll learn from their mistakes what they did with this film and improve upon the next. And then again, I'm just probably saying that. <laughs> I guess this movie made me a little bit hungry. Uh, yeah.